Okay, this is our last chapter. It's on electrochemistry. And the uh, um, last one we're going to do this well, ever. Uh, after this, we have the uh, science fair uh, we'll be setting up for and doing that stuff for the elementary or middle school kids when they come over. Uh, but before that, we got to finish electrochemistry. Did you collect our homework online? I did, but I don't know if you were here. I collected the homework for sure. So this is the last first chapter. The last chapter. What's that? Uh, you didn't collect mine. Did you want it? I, I, not right this minute. Now, later. Okay. Electrochemistry. All right. This is probably not my favorite chapter. Matter of fact, back in the days when we didn't have a double period of every day, if I had a choice of which one was going to go first and we ran out of time, it was always this one. So I, I probably in my years of teaching, about half the years of teaching, I probably skipped this chapter because of lack of time. Now, of course, we have lots of time. And we never yeah. skip it. And I've, expand, I've actually expanded it. But the reason that I'm not a fan of electrochemistry is that there are some parts of it that are very uh, confusing. Because when you're talking about, depending on what kind of cells you're talking about, they're exactly the opposite. The anode and the cathode are positive or negative, depending on whether it's voltaic or electrolytic. And all that stuff gets rather confusing. Even for, I mean, every year I have to rethink it and redo it because it's just uh, annoying. Um, but uh, it has a couple of neat labs we'll be doing. Um, we'll be making a battery, for example. Uh, we'll be a couple of uh, we aren't going to do labs on. But we'll do several demos: uh, electroplating and uh, electrolytic cell. We're going to decompose oxygen. Uh, uh, quite a few things we'll be doing in this chapter. Uh, they're kind of neat. Uh, so, um, what is electrochemical cell? What's an electrochemical cell? Let's talk about this. And, well, you know, there's a reason we did the previous chapter on redox reactions, and we did a review of that for those of you who had it, and we did it for the first time for those of you who didn't. All right? Every electrochemical cell, somewhere in there, there's going to be a redox reaction, all right, an oxidation and a reduction reaction. It's just the difference is we separate them. All right? And, uh, and there are different kinds of cells. We're going to talk about them. But everyone has this in common. They all have the stuff necessary to produce and maintain the flow of charge, the flow of electrons. So in other words, electricity is either produced, or I could, okay, it could be produced, we call that a battery, um, or I could use battery to produce, or to, to uh, make reactions that weren't supposed to happen, that aren't spontaneous, happen. And that's what, we've seen that before. You've never seen the battery part before, but you will. In this chapter. All right, so it's all about the flow of electrons. Okay, that's what an electrochemical cell is. There are two kinds of cells. There's electrolytic cells, which you have seen before. Here's one. Now, this may not look familiar to you, but if you look in the back there, that orange one, that's the one we used back then. But I just wanted to use a smaller version of it. All right, this was an electrochemical cell. You may remember when we used this. Okay, that orange one back there. Here's what we did. Um, I put water in this. I hooked up to these electrodes a battery. Actually, it wasn't a battery. It was a voltage source, but either way. I hooked up a, a battery to this, and we passed a current through it. Turned it on, passed the current, and we saw bubbles form at each of these electrodes right here. And those bubbles were collected, and at the end, I had about twice as much on one side as I had on the other side. I collected the one, put a, remember we put the light at, uh, splint over it and it popped, scared whoever I probably did it to, okay? If you remember that. I wasn't using this apparatus, this is too small. I used a I got this to try to replace that other one, not realizing this was way too small. Um, we're going to use this again, uh, probably tomorrow we'll be doing this. You have a double tomorrow, right? Um, it may not be tomorrow. Maybe for you guys it might be, well, we'll see. Maybe uh, it might be Thursday. But um, that's an electrolytic cell. You see, what you do in an electrolytic cell is you pass a current through a reaction that wouldn't normally happen. When did I show you this in Chem 1? What was I trying to show you if I took water and I got hydrogen and oxygen out of it? What kind of reaction is that? Think. What's that? What type of reaction is it where I took water and broke it up into hydrogen and oxygen? Decomposition, sure. That's when I first showed you this. I collected hydrogen, and we tested him. He went pop. He exploded. I, when I put a lighted, oh, somebody put a lighted uh, wooden splint over the top. And we tested the oxygen, which was half as much of, remember? It would be like twice as much hydrogen as there was of oxygen. And he 
relit the splints when you, when you blew them out and put them back in. Whether you remember it or not, you're going to see it again. Only this time, here's the difference. We're going to be able to calculate exactly how much hydrogen and oxygen I can get depending on the electricity I pass through. We're going to measure the current that's going through there. Anybody in E&M in here? And you're going to actually be at a little bit of an advantage uh, over most people who have never done these. But not as much as you might think because we're going to be trying to get electricity into the chemistry. You're dealing with just at the physics level. We're going to be trying to deal with it at the chemical level as well. In other words, there's got to be a link between how many moles and grams of oxygen I have as well as to how much electricity is going through it. And you guys in physics only stick with the electricity part. We're going to have to link them together. All right, anyway, so here's an electrolytic cell. Electricity is passed through a chemical causing a non-spontaneous reaction to occur. It, water doesn't break up by itself in the hydrogen oxygen. It's not spontaneous to do that. But I pass electric current through it, and it will. That's an electrolytic cell. You've seen it before. You didn't know it was called that, and you didn't do any calculations with it. We just did it as a demo to show you the decomposition reaction. Now we're going to do some work with it. As is the case in almost everything we've done in Chem 2, it's been something that we talked about in Chem 1, whether it was rates of reaction, equilibrium, phase changes, and then eventually doing well, three chapters on it in Chem 2, thermodynamics, endo and exothermic, and then doing calculations on it in Chem 2. And here, electrolytic cells, where we just saw it as a demonstration, now we're going to be doing some actual formulas and equations and, and uh, conversions. Alright, so electrolytic cells are one type. That's the kind we're going to talk about today. And I've got a, a, I've got a little uh, uh, gift for you. I used to have you guys draw all these, but as you can see, you're going to fill in this paper today. It's going to be a lot easier to have all this stuff already filled in for you. Uh, I'll give these out to you in a little bit when we get to that. We're going to do electrolytic cells. But let me just go over the rest of the stuff, generic stuff you should know about. It. The other kind of cell is called a voltaic cell. That's the battery. Alright? Everybody knows what a battery is. You've used all kinds. Probably have one in your calculator. All right. And you've used them for flashlights and pretty much your, your car has a battery. They're all the same basic idea. A direct current battery is this. It's not passing uh, electricity through a non-spontaneous reaction, but rather spontaneous chemical reactions producing electricity, giving me electricity. That's what a battery does, right? I mean, it, it generates electricity. That's what we'll be making in one of our labs. We'll be actually making a battery and hopefully lighting a light bulb. Not a big light bulb. <laughs> Just one of those little tiny ones that you probably have done if you're in physics, you know, you probably have done that before, but not with a, your chemically generated battery, just with a regular battery. And a regular battery is the same thing we're going to be making, only it's not as you know, messy, because we're just going to have solutions and, and, and metals we're going to be putting in different places. You'll see how it works. Uh, we'll be making our own battery. Um, uh, obviously, a regular battery is contained. Either way, those are the two kinds. We'll probably get the voltaic cells maybe by Friday, but no earlier than that, because we're going to be spending quite a bit of time on the electrolytic cells and other stuff we can do with that. All right. I had a lab I was going to try to do with electrolytic cells doing using these things. I bought like student versions of these that we could have done this, but I tried using them and they're really garbage. They're plastic and uh, they have, instead of platinum electrodes that don't react, they have just pins and uh, you get very poor results. They leak, the pins react with the current, they turn brown. I mean, it's not good. Um, so we won't be doing a lab on that, but we will be doing it as a bonus demo, which we've done before. All right. Okay. Uh, now, some other terms you have to be familiar with with electrochemistry. All right. In every electrochemical cell, you're going to have electrodes. Now, sometimes they're just inert electrodes that you don't want to react with anything, like in the case of the um, platinum electrodes in that uh, device right there. And that is platinum. It's, it's, this device is expensive because, mainly because of the platinum that's in there. Also, it's it's pretty, uh, you know, good glass and you know. Um, but the platinum electrodes that are in there are obviously expensive. Yeah. That's probably a dumb question, but like when people make a song and it gets platinum right here, is, yeah. that, is it actually platinum? No. I mean, they may make put some platinum in it. I don't know. Oh. But uh, that's just to be able to tell you, like, it's better than gold. It sold more copies than gold. 
Uh, not exactly sure how many copies makes a platinum record. You can probably look that up on your phone easily. Um, but yeah. Probably not easy to make a black. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to get that someday? I, well, Band of Brothers, we've had several platinum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, electrodes are just the things that, you know, uh, go into the uh, solution. And we call the guy where the electrode that um, reduction occurs the cathode, and where the uh, oxidation occurs the anode. So those are the two electrodes. And you have a cathode and anode on every battery, and you also have a cathode and anode in every electrolytic cell. The crazy part, the part I, I hate about this and other things too are, that are kind of annoying about electric chemistry is that every year, like most things I could teach in my sleep, I don't have to think about them, all right? But these you really have to think about because um, the cathode and anode, although that's consistent all the time, reduction occurs at the cathode, oxidation occurs at the anode. Uh, what's not consistent is whether it's positive or negative, depending on if it's a, an electrolytic or a voltaic cell. It depends. It's really how you're looking at it, and I'll try to get explain that when we get to that. It depends on which way you're looking at it. But this is consistent. And by the way, we've seen these before. Cat and cation, anion. Anion was our negative ions. Cations were, remember the uh, carbocations in in the... Uh, even in mechanisms for, for, for uh, electrophilic addition and, and stuff like that, nucleophilic substitution. All right, so we've seen these terms before, but it's going to really, really have to understand it this time. It's not going to be a matter of just memorizing the anode's always negative and the cathode's always positive, because that's not true, and you'll see that when we get there. All right, and finally, you have the ele what is electricity? I have a neat little analogy I'm going to use. I think it's used by most people. I don't know. Oh, well, actually, Jesse could help. Uh, this uh, Schrader ever talk about how water, the analogy with water and electricity? Like water pressure. Yeah, yeah, water pressure, height is voltage, all that kind of stuff. Um, and current is the flow. You know, all right. Um, well, we're going to use that. I'll try to get, you know, get that across to you. But basically, electrical conduction is simply the movement of charge. Okay? Transfer of charge either by the movement of electrons. That's what you usually do. I mean, when you, when you plug something in for your, turn your computer on, all right? You charge your iPad. You're, you're basically doing that. What you're having is electrons are flowing in there. All right, they're flowing. Whenever anything this computer's on right now, electrons are flowing. Okay, but it doesn't have to be electrons. It could be any charge, and you're going to see that with the batteries we're going to make. It, and even for the ones we're not even even electrolytic cells we're going to talk about today, it's not always just electrons that complete the circuit. It's ions as well. Okay. All right. So these are the uh, general terms we're going to have to we're going to be dealing with throughout the chapter. But we're going to start now with the actual um, cells. The first cell you don't need to. Well, there's one thing you have to write down here at the top. Actually, you can you can put it down right now. It's still in your notes, I think. Roman numeral four, electrolytic cells, and write this down in your notes. Then I'll pass this around. The rest of it's going to be the pictures that go. This will help you not have to draw all things. Now, as I already explained with electrolytic cells, in an electrolytic cell, you have a battery or some other source of electricity hooked up to electrodes, and we pass electricity through chemicals, making a reaction that wouldn't normally happen happen. All right, so... It consists of inert electrodes. Usually platinum electrodes are your best bet. They're not going to, the best part about platinum, it doesn't really react with much of anything. Uh, it doesn't rust over time. You can pass electricity through it. All right. And even copper, for example, is not as good. And because copper is going to work, copper as a wire, is gonna, you're going to see what in some of the batteries we're going to make, copper is going to be one of our electrodes. So I can't really just put the copper wire. It's going to react inside of it. All right. So <clears throat> platinum is your best bet. And, uh, but either way, some inert electrode, and you hook it up to a battery, and you pass a current through it. Here's what you're going to see. You're going to see observations. 
Now, notice on your paper now. You're going to be filling, the rest of this stuff is going to be on your paper. I just handed it out to you. So, okay. Let's look at the uh, molten sodium chloride or the down cell. Okay. Here are what you see. Here's what you see. I'm going to write them down here. You have your observations. Okay. You're going to write these in here in a second. Okay. If you could, I, I, by the way, I, I changed the background on this. I would like to have had a back, black background, but it doesn't show up. These things don't show up in the picture. Um, this uh, electrode, you'll see chlorine gas is produced. I hope you can see that on the, you can see it on your, your uh, notes at least. Anyway, chlorine gas is going to be produced at one electrode. And molten sodium is going to be produced at the other. This is the easiest one to do. It does exactly what you'd expect. There's really no thinking involved in this one. I have in here melted salt. So I got floating around in here sodium ions and chloride ions. At one electrode, I get chlorine gas. And at the other electrode, I get molten sodium. How do we explain that? Those are my two observations. Chlorine gas is liberated at one electrode. Molten sodium is formed at the other. By the way, this is a way to produce sodium and chlorine gas industrially. You can actually produce the, these things, making sodium, making chlorine gas, by basically melting salt and passing electricity through it, just on a large scale. Now, let me show you what's going on in here. And then I'll try to explain in the observations what's happening in each of these. Okay? Have we got that copy? All right, let's take a look here. First of all, you've got your sodium ion, hang on, don't break this in here, but there are sodium ions all over the place. Okay? And there are chlorine ions all over the place. Well, I don't want to use green paint, let me see if I use black. Chlorine ion, chloride ions all over the place. Just floating around in there. And that's all there are in there. Sodium and chloride ions. If I'm getting chlorine gas over here, I need you now to think back to the redox chapter we just did. Can you figure out what the reaction must be? These are the reactions we're going to write down now. Okay. What reaction must be happening here? I believe you have this as A, right? It's A first. Okay. What reaction must be happening um, at the chlorine electrode? Okay, we'll call that electrode A. All right, this is electrode A. This is B. It corresponds to this A and B up here. Okay? What must be happening there? Well, you're taking chloride ions, right? And they're becoming chlorine gas. Okay? So you have a chloride ion with a minus one charge becoming chlorine gas. That's a half reaction, just like last chapter. What would you do if you were doing that half reaction that... The electron equation last you'd balance it for mass, and you'd add two electrons over here. In other words, two electrons were given off in order for that to happen. Does everybody agree? That's what you would have done, and you would have called it what? Oxidation. Oxidation. That's exactly right. So you now know what electrode A is. What is he? The anode. Because it just said a minute ago, that's where oxidation happens. What do you think is happening at this electrode? It's pretty obvious. I'm taking, I have sodium ions, but I'm getting sodium metal, molten sodium metal, right? So my B electrode is going to be Na with a plus one charge becoming Na with a zero charge, and that takes one electron to do it, right? And we call that what? Oxidation or reduction. Reduction. See why we we basically did those redox reactions. Nothing in these is going to be anywhere near as complicated as the redox reactions you just did in the last chapter. All right? But you will often do the half reactions every single time. And more. Now we're not first of all, did I balance electrons to each other? I'll need a two in front of this guy, right? Make sense? That gives me two electrons gained, two electrons lost. But I still have a few more things to tell me on here, okay? And that's what I want you to, that's what we're going to look at now. Take a look. Uh, I, can, I have these actually written out, so I'll put them right there. All right? We, uh, you know that's oxidation and that's reduction, which means that this must be the anode, right? You can write the anode down there. And this guy must be the cathode. 
Now, the last thing for me to tell you about this is what charge they have. And um, then I want to just summarize exactly what's happening overall. All right. Turns out that in an electrolytic cell, the anode is positively charged and the cathode is negatively charged. Okay. Now, let's see what happens. Let me just summarize all this. You guys, we, we did it from the observations to the reactions to the oxidation to, to the electrodes. Okay? Observations told us what happened in the reactions. The reactions told us it was oxidation or reduction. The oxidation or reduction told us it was an anode or a cathode, and that told us it was positive or negative. All right? So you have to go through that. Remember I said, if I look at that cell immediately, do I know which is the anode or the cathode, which is the positive or the negative? No. I have to think about it too because you have to go through that process and think about it. All right? Because and by the way, if you think, oh well, I could I, eventually if I do enough of these, they'll become like that. Yeah, except that when we start talking about voltaic, voltaic cells, it's the exact opposite when it comes to the positive and negative the end of the cathode. All right? Because the voltaic cell is the battery, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's trace the electrons. Let's see what happens. Here's my battery. Okay. The battery serves the purpose of generating electrons, okay? Generating a charge. So the electrons flow this way. See, that's where it has a little arrow there. Electro electrons come down to this um, electrode. Now, let's see what happens at that electrode. Why would those what, what's happening to those electrons at that electrode? Well, we had sodium ions. They needed those electrons. They took that electron, right? And they turned him into sodium metal. Got it? All right, what completes the circuit over here? Well, it's not electrons. Electrons don't flow all the way through, okay? What completes the circuit is, since this guy over here is negative, all right, and this guy over here is positive, what's going to happen to those chloride ions? They're going to be repelled from that side, right? And they're going to be attracted to this side, which is positively charged. Why? What's going to happen at this point? Here, the chloride ions are going to become chlorine gas, right? They're going to become Cl2. And when they do, what do they give off? Electrons, which flow up the wire and back into the battery. The whole thing continues that way. You see it? All right? And that's basically what's going on in an electrolytic cell. Now, the mystery about this is the battery part. We're going to, talk, we're going to solve that mystery sometime next uh, Friday, maybe, or maybe Monday. We'll see. All right, that's the weird part. How are those electrons being generated? We'll talk about that. But for now, assuming electrons are being generated, that's the flow. That's the flow of charge. That's what's happening in this case. Everybody got that? That's the easy one. Let me tell you why that's easy. There were only two things in this beaker, sodium ions and chloride ions. And we got chlorine gas and sodium metal. No big surprise. Let's see what happens in this next one. If I take... <laughs> the aqueous sodium chloride. In other words, instead of melting sodium chloride, I now have sodium chloride dissolved in water and I put my two electrodes in. Okay, Sodium chloride dissolved in water, two electrodes in there. What do I see? Well, at first, my observations are consistent with what I just saw. Chlorine gas forms at one electrode. Right there, there's my chlorine gas. But as you can see over here, instead of getting molten sodium, I actually get hydrogen gas. What the heck is going on? And something else, if you measured it, if you had some phenolphthalein, there's a picture in your book of this. Phenolphthalein around, you would find that this side turns pink. It's getting basic. Hmm. What is going on here? <laughs> well, again. Remember I told you the way you want to work through these is starting with the observations, get to the equations, because that will help you with the next part. Let's start with the uh, uh, observations and get to the equations. The first one's pretty easy for A, reaction A. What's that going to be? I don't think anybody's going to have trouble writing reaction A. It's exactly what you wrote a minute ago. I got chlorine gas. Remember, what's in here now are still, we have sodium ions, chloride ions, all right? And those chloride ions are coming over here turning into chlorine gas, and I think everybody would have written that for the equation, the exact same equation we just saw a minute ago. The problem's going to be, where the heck's that hydrogen come from? 
Exactly. It had to have come from water. Because not only does this guy have sodium and chloride ions, it has water. So here's what you write for this guy. For B, okay, this guy's electrode A, this is electrode B. All right. For B, you would write water. H2O is becoming what? Be careful. What's one thing we know it's becoming? Look at that electrode. Look at the observations. Hydrogen gas, absolutely. What else is it say in the observations? It becomes oh, it's OHs. Basic means OHs. Uh -huh. Another reason we did the previous chapter. Now, I got to balance that for mass first. How am I going to do that? Well, I got two H's and one H's. Three H's on this side. There's only two on that side. If I put a 2 here and a 2 there, that balances my H's. It also balances my O's. How many electrons do I need to balance them out for charge? Look at I got what charge on this side? Zero. That side? So I need two electrons on that side. See it? Which works out nice because how many electrons were lost by chlorine? Two. two. And if they weren't, I would have just balanced it with, with coefficients around it. No big deal. All right. So that's what's going on here. This is weird because I put salt in to my solution, but the sodium never got used at all. He never got used. And here's the reason why. You don't understand this yet. We will get to standard reduction potentials. We'll talk about that next week sometime after the voltaic cells. We start talking about them. Turns out... Sodium isn't as easy to reduce as water is. Water is easier to reduce, so it takes the path of least resistance. That's what the electrons are going to do. They're going to reduce the guy that's easier to reduce. And that's why. Now, how, you say, well, how am I supposed to know that? Well, number one, you don't. You look at the observations. And number two, when you do have to know which one gets, uh, you will look at a chart of standard reduction potentials, which will tell you who's easier to reduce and who's harder to reduce. Okay? All right. Not bad. Uh, what else do I have to do for this? I'm not done. What is that? Oxidation and reduction. Put it back over here. Uh, what charge am I going to have then? Up here? Oh, yeah, that's, I'm sorry, I forgot this too. Anode, cathode, right? Anode because that's where oxidation occurs. Cathode is where reduction occurs. That's consistent all the time. And finally, the charge is. Positive for this guy, negative for that one. Do not assume that you will always have the positive on the left and the negative on the right. Okay, don't assume that. All depends on how I might mark the uh, uh, how I mark up the uh, battery or the you know um, the whole cell itself. Okay, you will have to given the observations tell me what happens. But it's always anode is. Anode is always where oxidation occurs. Reduction is always where cathode occurs. So that's easy enough. The battery is going to be the confusing part. We won't get to that till, like I said, Friday, maybe Monday. All right, good? All right, the last one. Look at what happens in the last one. Yeah, I put in aqueous sodium sulfate. Okay, and turns out that neither sodium nor the sulfate do anything. What do I end up doing? I end up doing this. This is all I had to do when I did this for you guys back in Chem 1. If I put water with sodium sulfate in it, actually I used hydrogen sulfate or sulfuric acid, it turns out that it's easier for it to reduce water and it's easier for it to oxidize water. So the sodium and the sulfate aren't even used. And all I get is oxygen on one side and hydrogen on the other. It's this cell right here that you saw that we're diagramming right here. Okay. Observations are as follows. You get hydrogen gas on one side and it becomes basic. You get oxygen gas on the other side and it becomes acidic. And I want you, without me helping you this time, see if you can figure out what your reactions are going to look like there for A and B.
So oxygen gas is given off here. Hydrogen gas is given off here. Those are your observations. Under reactions for A and B, what's going on for A? What's going on for B? See if you can figure it out. Write the half reactions. Are you going to use sodium or sulfate anywhere? Clearly not. There's no sodium being produced. There's no sulfur being produced. It's the water in both cases. See if you can balance them out. Looking at the observations, what do you think it's going to mean if it says it comes acidic? You should again know what happens there from last chapter. Well, the first electrode is exactly the same as what we saw in the last example, right? Uh, then you all write that down for the first electrode. The second one's a new one, the one that's a little bit more confusing. See if you can figure out what happens here. In B, it tells you oxygen gas is formed. That's easy enough. I know I put low 2 down. Okay. <coughs> it also tells you the solution becomes acidic. That's good. I know what to put there. H pluses. And now I have to balance it. How am I going to balance this guy? I got two O's on this side. I'll need a 2 in front of that guy. What will I need in front of the H's? A 4. How many electrons will I need to make everybody happy over here? Four on this side, right? Four electrons. And therefore, what will I need in front of this guy here? A two. Now, I have it all written out better than that. Just want to show you where it came from. Okay. All right? Wasn't, how come A is for the H2, but remember how we put on the electrodes A and B? Yeah, this is A and this is B. In this case, uh, hydrogen is produced over here, so uh, this is A in this case, and this is B. Yeah, you're right. I, I have them back. I, I purposely did want to do one backwards, uh, so you didn't always get, think that A and B are on the same places. So that that does change. Um, your, your, yeah, well, it doesn't if you put A and B like that. Right. It's okay. All right. All right. So what about the rest of it? Over here. Reduction. Right? Everybody agree? An oxidation for that? And we go with that. Alright? If this is where reduction is happening, and I'm in hydrogen gas, that must be the cathode, and this guy must be the anode, where oxidation is, right? And finally, positive and negatives. What do you think? Right? All right. Now, last thing I want to show you here is a generic uh, cell because, oops, don't need that anymore. On the test, here's what I'm going to give you. Okay, uh, I know this for a fact. Now, in the book, it does not. 11 to 15 are questions like I just did a minute ago. The last three I just did. It's going to say, here's going to say, diagram the cell, labeling the oxidation, reduction, anode, cathode, uh, positive, negative, you know, and half reactions. What you can do and have to do is draw something like this. Okay, I have down there. It's already, you don't have to copy it. It's right there. And what makes, what, what I'm going to recommend to you is unlike the way I taught it to you over the last three examples, you don't have to put the A and B up here, A and B down here. You can do the things all at once. In other words, that previous one we just did, you know, or, or well, let's take the easiest one, the sodium one. If this were where uh, the chlorine gas was produced, you would simply write, you know, chloride ions becoming chlorine metal 
plus two electrons. And over here you would add sodium ions, become plus one electron, becoming sodium metal. You would have called it reduction, you would have called it the cathode, and you would have had a negative on this side, and vice and all that. So that's basically that's what you would have to write. This is just a generic answer here. That's what your answer to the first one we did, the molten sodium chloride cell. That's what it would look like. Okay? All right. Uh, um, and that makes it easier to have the right, the whole thing, and then observations and, and reactions below and above. And, you know, because you can write oxidation reduction, whatever it is, right there on the same side. And you're labeling it at the same time. Okay? Just so you know. All right. Now, not everything in the homework is like that. The first few are even easier.